The following program deals with a controversial subject. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. Viewers are invited to make a judgment based on all available information. This is your captain speaking. We are beginning our descent into madness. <laughs> And we are back to another edition of West of the Rockies. I'm Frank. Thank you guys for sticking around. I know it's late, but boy, do we have another exciting show lined up for everyone tonight. I hope that the first week of 2016 is treating everybody very well. Uh, I think we're all excited, as it is the case with a brand new year. You know, we kicked the old one to the curb, and we welcome the new one. Speaking of welcoming, welcoming <laughs> Genevieve. Genevieve, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing all right. Thank you yeah. very much. How are you tonight? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm always pumped. Quick uh, shout-out to everybody tuning in tonight. We really uh, appreciate your support. Another great interview up on the website. Don't forget to check it out, WOTRradio.com. We spoke with Dr. Christopher Bader of uh, Chapman so University. Cool. He's so cool. He broke it down for us. He's, he's been doing a lot of research into the paranormal. And boy, it was interesting. I highly recommend everybody check that in Rio. Check out his book, Paranormal America. It's a really great book. If you're into the type of topics we discuss here and you want to see him from a different light, that's the book to grab. That's for sure. You can find yeah. a link on our website. A very meta angle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And tonight we have another amazing guest. Actually, I've been looking forward to this interview for a while mm -hmm. since we uh, had the pleasure of meeting him back in uh, October. Uh, October? During yeah, oh, October yeah. Halloween, Halloween weekend time. Uh, here in LA, it was Kamikaze weekend as well, and uh, we were doing our our usual rounds covering the event. And uh, we're always looking for fun, interesting booths. We and we sure found one. <laughs> and, and we sure found one because when we walk past this one, obviously I'm quite the fan of of the female gender if i may say I so you're gonna say something else female <laughs> i'm like wow that too <laughs> that too i'm a fan of that as well so of course my attention was drawn and lo and behold we came across a really interesting publication which you know it's funny i remember hearing uh, uh the name here and there but i've never really took the time to check it out and what better way to check it out than at this booth and our guest is here tonight who is none other well hey you know what i don't want to take genevieve's job genevieve if you be <laughs> so kind Hear to introduce to do a little intro. Please do. All right, well, tonight we've got Robert Stephen Ryan on the show, aka Corpsey, the dead attorney chief, that's right, and founder of Girls and Corpses magazine. Corpsey's a writer, actor, producer, pretty much everything, <laughs> with a particular interest in all things gore and horror, usually with a generous dose of dark humor thrown in. He's written for comic books, movies, magazines, all sorts of things, and even has a book of short stories titled My Brain Escapes Me, which features a very cool variety of nighttime stories ranging from comedy to horror. I haven't read it myself, but it sounds super fun. It is available on Amazon, I believe, so check it out. He's produced a couple of horror movies recently, namely Parasites and The Chair, and is currently working on Rob Zombie's upcoming 31 movie. Nice. Alas, if you haven't seen our interview with Corpsey on YouTube yet, you've obviously missed out. Been living under a rock. So with that, I have the pleasure of welcoming mm -hmm. RS Corpsey Ryan onto West of the Rockies. Very impressive introduction. It almost took the whole hour. Are we done? <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we oh, thank good. our guest. Thank you very much. We'll see you again next week. <laughs> I want you to be part of every interview I do. I want to have you be my lead-in. <laughs> I was impressed. I'm like, who's she talking about? Very impressed. We'll send her along. Well, that, that's why we have her here, because anything she says all of a sudden just sounds important. <laughs> well, I'm very impressed that you're starting out your year. And by the way, Happy New Year to everyone that is not still in a comatose state from the... <laughs> <laughs> from the holidays, but starting with Girls and Corpses magazine has got to be a very gutsy way to lead off your year, and I think it portends very good things ahead that you're starting with Girls and Corpses. Oh, well, I know and so. <laughs> no better way to start than definitely with, with something like Girls and Corpses. It's a very unique concept, um, marrying right? corpses, <laughs> right, and really beautiful young ladies. How did you come up with the idea to make a magazine? Did you know that this audience was out there? <laughs> well, first of all, I just want to say that, that like you, Frank, I'm a, uh, a fan of the fem female genitalia. <laughs> Isn't that what you were trying to say? Yeah, pretty much. I think we all, you know, look, we all like women. Men like looking at women, and women like looking at women. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, in the world of advertising and marketing, you can put a beautiful girl next to anything to sell it. 
And in the case of girls and corpses, we have found that you could even put a rotting, festering corpse Mm -hmm. next to a girl and create a magazine. And I had to be out of my mind, which I am, to create this magazine. But uh, it is a phenomenal story of, and successful story of uh, how this all came about and the fact that this magazine now is a worldwide newsstand horror comedy magazine. And it's worldwide. You can get it anywhere on the world, in the world on newsstands. We're also at girlsandcorpses.com. You can uh, check it out. Um, and we have celebrities at this point. It's mm-hmm. gotten to the point where we have celebrities coming to us, and our current issue has Danny Trejo on the cover. Mm-hmm. There's a girl by the name of Danny Devine, who's a uh, very well-known English fetish model, uh-huh. holding up his severed head on nice. the cover of the magazine. And, uh, it, you know, it's a. I, I think people are shocked when they think what this magazine is. Some They think it's either some horrible fetish mm-hmm. or uh, it's it got nudity in, in the magazine, but it doesn't. It's really like Maxim meets The Walking Dead meets Mad Magazine. It is comedy and horror. But we fulfill the promise, and we have absolutely gorgeous girls in -hmm. various states of outfits, you know, whether mostly bikinis and things Mm -hmm. like this. It's very sexy, but 15 years ago when we started the magazine online, which I'll tell you about that story, uh, we we decided to do uh, uh, Go Without Nudity, and it's interesting that Playboy took all these years to decide, mm-hmm. starting this year, not to have nudity in their right. magazine. Yeah. And the reason we made that decision was when we were starting the magazine, my feeling was to be different. Not having nudity made you different, because if you can't find enough sex on the web, you really need some computer <laughs> lessons, because it's so saturated. So better to go the opposite way. And it's more clever, because it shows that you can create something so entertaining without nudity. And still have all the sexiness of it. But how this magazine came about is quite an interesting, long story. I don't know if uh, your audience is still awake. Please uh, let us know before we talk more about hot chicks. So please. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Well, hot chicks are included in all of this. Uh, Sweet. So going back, uh, when I was 10 years old, I had an accident, a massive skull fracture. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was so severe that my brain literally came out of my skull and was put back in, obviously, I think. Um, <laughs> and this was a, a horrible accident, and I, and I had 64 stitches put in my head. But before that oh, happened, wow. my parents were told by the doctors that I was uh, gone. No I way. I had died. Oh, my so, goodness. Uh, I'm one of those people, and I know we're talking about paranormal mm-hmm. stuff, so there's a lot of stuff we can talk about there. But um, that's why my book is called My Brain Escapes Me. That was my first book. Mm-hmm. How old were you? I'm sorry, when, when this happened? I was 10 years old. 10 years old, wow. 10, 10 years old. And there's an x-ray of my skull as a kid when this happened. So uh, I survived. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually went really? blind in one eye for about a year, and I missed a whole grade of school. Mm-hmm. Oh, so really? Oh, wow. Missed a grade of school. So I always had this kind of weird fascination with, with death, and yet I have a kind of a comedic uh, slant, and my father was a, a comedy writer, uh-huh. and I got a lot of humor, I think, from him, and then with his dark side. So, uh, you know, I, I write a lot of fiction, and there's a lot of humor in my horror that I write, and it just comes out that way. It's not, you know... I'm not trying to do it that way. But, uh-huh. uh, so my first book came out. It was very successful. It was on the Barnes & Noble and Borders and did very well. And then um, I started doing uh, comic books because I always loved comic books. And, you know, I grew up with – I loved Mad Magazine. That was like the, the holy grail. Right. When I was – in my teens, I even went to New York. And a lot of people don't know, uh, Mad was on Madison Avenue. I went and met with uh, the heads of that magazine. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, wow. Al Feldstein, who was an editor. And at that time, I wasn't able to get a, a job writing for them. It was the toughest job and the uh, toughest satire writing job to get in the country. I bet. Um, and so all the stuff that they turned down, I sent to Cracked Magazine, and they loved it. I was the best <laughs> writer to send them stuff in years and wound up feeling like a traitor writing for Cracked Magazine. <laughs> but in the meantime, I, my comic books, the first one was Selected Readings from Satan's Powder Room. And it was a comic book about what uh, Satan would like to read when he's sitting on the toilet. Mm, so it's okay. these really dark, messed up stories, and there's this kind of devil girl sitting on his lap. That will, And that was very successful. We sold out at Comic-Con. It was a huge success. Um, we then did a, uh, I wrote another comic book, which was um, Chicken Soup for Satan. That was the second comic book. The third one was Satan Gone Wild. And then I wound up doing a 
a 280-page graphic novel called Satan's Satan's Leading Circus of Hell. (laughs) And uh, that had 43 of the top horror artists in the world. And all of this happened before Girls and Corpses magazine. Oh, wow. When I was at Comic-Con, I knew a guy that had these corpses. And you know what plastinated corpses are? Yeah. Uh Yeah, yeah. Body worlds. So he had some plastinated corpses. And he would let me take them to San Diego to have to show them at the booth. Girls would walk up all day long and go, oh, my God, that's amazing. Can I take my picture with the corpse? <laughs> and this happened for two years. I'm like, what's up with girls and corpses? Mm-hmm. And that's where the title came into my mind. And then I had this moment where I thought to myself, please, God, don't let this be your career. <laughs> and it actually kind of has. Yeah. So I run the magazine. It was online um, starting, you know, I guess we started 2002. We did it online for for 15 issues, fully wow. free on the Internet. And then we got mm-hmm. distribution. And ever since then, we've been doing a quarterly uh, comedy horror magazine of a very high quality, mm-hmm. you know, all color, mm-hmm. more heavyweight paper than any of the horror magazines. And we're the only horror magazine that's ever done their own photo shoots. Oh, really? So our magazine's more expensive. Most horror magazines get a slide from the studio right. of yeah. whatever current horror and whatever, and then they just put a, you know credits and things on the top of it. Mm-hmm. We do the whole shoot, which is like a film shoot. Yeah. You know, there's a location yeah. and hair and makeup and wardrobe. We fly talent out from wherever they are. Danny Devine on our current issue came out from London. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we flew out from London. So there's, you know, it's just a phenomenon. And because of the success of the magazine, uh, it started branding this Girls and Corpses, which is now completely trademarked. Nice. And um, we started getting into movie making. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So I'll, I'll take a breath and let you ask questions before I get you into anything <laughs> else. We can talk forever. Let me go back to, to this accident you had when you were 10 years old. Because I noticed that after that, it seems like your writing was a, a bit darker in the themes. <laughs> was that a result of basically a, a near-death experience? Well, at the time that happened, um, I was more of an actor. I was a child actor, you know, mm-hmm. doing commercials and things. And mm-hmm. so uh, I stopped doing that because I think my parents wanted me to, quote, have a more normal life, which, uh-huh. as you can see, didn't really <laughs> didn't work out so well for them. Um, but I wasn't writing at 10. Um, I think it was after college where I started realizing that I could, could write, and I okay. started selling stories to magazines. So that's when I stole uh, over 100 stories to magazines. Mm -hmm. And actually, one of the stories wound up in a book alongside, and it won a Bram Stoker Award alongside Clive Barker and Ray Bradbury. So that's a company to be with. That Uh, is. And then I won a lot of awards for the writing. I won World Horror Con and things like that. So. That is really impressive. And as far as the uh, the girls and corpses, you said that girls love taking pictures with these corpses. Do you find that to be the case now as the magazine has gotten more popular? Do you have girls sending their headshots going like, hey, can you put me in the next issue? It's a phenomenon. I, I still can't quite understand it. <laughs> but we get pictures. I get photos from all over the world. It, it's Non stop. Wow. I am, and I'm not making this up. I am on more girls' bucket list now. <laughs> we just shot Any Divine. It was her dream to wow. be in this magazine. You know, these are people that this is all they want. And the funny thing is, is that most of the girls that write in, they're either, you know, goth or alternative yeah. girls mm-hmm. or metal girls. But we don't really shoot those girls so much for the magazine. For the mm-hmm. magazine to work, we use uh, girls that are kind of the girls next door, the cheerleader, beautiful, blonde, and brunettes, mm-hmm. but not heavily tatted girls. And the reason for that is w- when you're a kid in high school and you're trying to get a date with this cute girl, blonde, and she won't give you the time of day, but she'll be in Girls and Corpses magazine, <laughs> kissing a corpse. Yeah. So it's the contrast. It's the yin and the yang. It's beauty and the beast. We contrast these two things. And if we contrasted a corpse with a girl that was all tatted out, mm-hmm. you know, piercings all over you like yawn, you know. But this really catches people's eye. And because there's a beautiful girl, they can't look away. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's something kind of hideous, but she's a pretty girl. Right. She's okay with it. But to answer your question, it's nonstop. There are girls that beg 
Uh, the other funny thing is, is that a lot of these girls send naked pictures to me, <laughs> and, and I always write them back and I say, you know, nudity is not required, but it is always appreciated. <laughs> so, uh, I, I get nude, but we don't need that. You know, I get all the shots of girls in the mirror, you know, mm-hmm. taking pictures of their butts and all that kind of stuff. Nice. It's just a different world that I grew up with. I couldn't imagine people taking pictures of their ass in a, you know, mirror. But, uh, <laughs> that and... and Everything else, when you were talking about your female, uh, what do you call it? Female uh, something? Uh, 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 gender? I'm, I'm a fan <laughs> of the female <laughs> gender. Female gender. Yeah. <laughs> Girls are sending me pictures of their female gender. <laughs> and, uh, I get lots of gender pics. With a magazine, and I don't understand it. It's just a, so, you know, it's not a bad life to have. It doesn't sound like it. Surrounded by absolutely gorgeous girls, <laughs> and um, they they also work with me at shows. They come to shows. They do events with me. I'll be going to um, Avian in Las Vegas probably for about my sixth year. Nice. Um, the thing is, is that we're not obviously a, a porn magazine. Uh-huh. But when I started this magazine 15 years ago, I thought, hey, how do I get the audience that looks at porn, which is basically everybody, mm-hmm. if I can get that audience to know about Girls and Corpses magazine. Mm-hmm. Right. And so mm-hmm. what's funny about this is I had done shows. As a matter of fact, I had a table at uh, one of the, and AVN is the adult video, you know, it's in Las Vegas. Yeah. And it's all the porn stars. And I, I Frank had my knows. booth <laughs> walk by. What's that? I, I said, I'm sure Frank I'm, 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 I'm somewhat familiar with it. I, I, I think Frank, I may have heard of it. <laughs> Frank may have heard of it. There's this thing called Porn Frank. You'll have to check it out. Oh, so, we'll do. Girls would walk by my Girls and Corpses booth. And I had, my booth was decorated. I had corpses hanging everywhere. And I was doing what I call the body bag show, where I take a forensic body bag, and I would get two girls in it, and they'd kiss, and I'd zip them up in it. You know, it was a whole crazy <laughs> nice. thing. But girls would walk by all day, and these are hardcore porn girls. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much I can really say on your show. You can say anything you want. <laughs> anything. Okay. anything. Fucking A. I, I'm in. <laughs> so girls would walk by, and they're girls who had done, like, you know, anal gangbangs with mm-hmm. like a hundred dudes, mm-hmm. and they would walk up to my magazine and go, "Oh my God, that's disgusting!" And walk away. <laughs> <laughs> and they put me like in the back. Can you imagine me at a porn show and being in the back? Like they had to separate me. Oh kind wow! Of into an area. That's almost a compliment. So it cracks me up because. I am known in the fetish world. I do events in the fetish world, mm-hmm. but I'm not, you know, I'm not wearing a rubber mask right, right. now. Although I do have a rubber mask with a zipper. So when <laughs> I do event, when I do fetish events, I have something to wear. I had it made actually, but I'm not. I'm not. You know, it's not Fifty Shades of uh, Corpse. You know, with that. I'm, not into, mm-hmm. I'm not into that. So, but it's fun. It, it's a blast, and working with all these great talents. It and sounds like a blast. I I, I, I want to know how how many um you know how often you actually deal with real corpses or plasticized corpses, you know, in the production of the magazine. Well, that, that's a good question. Uh, people ask me, are they real corpses? And the answer is, there are real corpses in every issue of Girls and Corpses magazine. Mm-hmm. Every single issue, there's real death in the magazine. And the reason that it's in there is because it's a magazine about death. So to mm-hmm. avoid that would be ridiculous. Now, mm-hmm. I will tell you that not every corpse you see in the magazine is real. Mm-hmm. Not everyone's real. A lot of them are, and right. some of them aren't, mm-hmm. but... It's, you know, my secret of which ones they are. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we we do have real corpses in there. And phenomenal stories having to do with uh, forensics and autopsies and cremations, people that do body retrievals, Mm -hmm. people who work at paramedics, uh, on and on and on. Just real in-depth. And, you know, quite frankly, sometimes it's kind of humorous. I mean, remember, you were talking about some of the things I have coming out. I have a brand new book just came out called Last Laughs gallows humor and these are mm-hmm. cartoons that are in every issue of girls and corpses magazine and we got so many of them together we put a book out oh, wow. Oh, wow. But what it is i found that people that work in that are work with the police or you know fire department mm-hmm. or and drive an ambulance they have gallows humor which is 
the sort of uh, dark uh, mm-hmm. kind of sick humor, but it's a tension reliever. So these ca- cartoons are very sick and dark. Yet, I, one of our Girls and Corpses issue was a fire-themed issue. We also have mm-hmm. themes for every issue. So it was our fire issue. And I, are you guys playing metal music on your show? Because it sounded metal when I was Yeah, we, we play a little bit of everything. Have you heard of a band called the Butcher Babies? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> well, Heidi and Carla, before they started their whole band thing going, they were on the cover of two issues of Girls and Corpses oh, magazine. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, they were on as Fire Girls. Uh-huh. I think it was like issue eight. And they were on another issue. We did um, the Play Dead Mansion with um, Pew Huffner. <laughs> uh, we had them on that cover as well. I got them on a show, uh, on two shows that I was invited to be on in Germany. Uh-huh. And they, it got so much uh, traffic there in Germany, so many viewers, mm-hmm. that Heidi and Carla decided to go on tour to Germany, and that was the spark of their show. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Things took off. So they're friends of mine. We even had, I remember we had a crazy private party up in the mountain, you know, uh, this is back when they were wearing nipple tape, which they don't do anymore. It's more <laughs> sophisticated. But, you know, we did a wild show. They performed for us at the party and things like that. Oh, um, that's very cool. And yeah, the, the whole point of the fire girl issue is that guys that are, that work in the fire department love this issue. And it's, it's Heidi and Carla holding a burnt corpse. Mm-hmm. So, wow. Uh, this is where half your audience is tuning out at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> if they're Googling I think the they're cover, Googling I, think that, yeah, I think they're sticking around. <laughs> well, if, you, if you go to girlsandcorpses.com, that's the main site, and uh-huh. you can go to back issues, and you can see all those issues. If you want to buy issues, all the issues are also there, and that's girlsandcorpsesstore.com. At the store, we have all the issues. You know, we've sold out 12 issues that are gone completely. Wow. Some of them go for over $100 now, which wow. is a whole other story. But we have crazy things we sell there. Like, uh, I have a product called Pussy Magnets. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they're a magnet with a, uh, what do we call it, a, uh, a female's gender on it. I <laughs> that, is, that is a term we're using. Female yet. <laughs> gender that is an actual mold of a, um, uh, a porn friend of mine. And you can put it on your refrigerator and it's a, a pussy magnet. Oh, that's <laughs> we, we, genius. We've got it up on our screen right now. <laughs> yeah, I know that. <laughs> we're looking at all this oh, stuff. <laughs> yeah, and we also have prison soap that's got a butthole on it. <laughs> Honestly, uh, some of these you know, things are genius. The, the severed keychains, I recommend them as well. Yeah, there's a severed nipple and a severed ear. We have uh, we have a glow in the dark marijuana leaf, which is very oh popular, wow, and that goes with our <laughs> marijuana issue. But each issue has a theme. Like the current issue mm-hmm. with Danny Trejo is a whole biker issue. Right. So. We have people that are amazing. Like uh, there was a movie called Hell Ride, which was a Quentin Tarantino produced film. Uh-huh. Uh, we mm-hmm. have Larry Bishop who wrote it and is the star of it. We did a whole piece on him. Nice. There's a movie coming out called Frankenstein Created Bikers that I'm in, which is oh, about cool. bikers. We have Robert Lucardo, really cool. who is a TV actor who's in a zillion things. We have Rusty Coons, uh, who I'm seeing on Tuesday night, who's uh, one of the stars of Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he is the um, the Orange County chapter president of the Hells Angels. Yeah. And spent an eight-year stretch in prison. So, you know, it, on and on. We've got uh, this guy, Robert Gordon, who was in one of the first biker movies called The, uh, the Loveless. But I could go, you know, it's all motorcycle-themed. You know, so that is really rad. That. Now, you mentioned a movie that you're going to be in, and, and you know, it's funny because um, I'm a big Twilight Zone fan, and uh, I, I think about a year ago, I think, we were at Disneyland on, in the Tower of Terror, and obviously, uh, I want to, you know, I love everything, you know, Twilight Zone-ish, and, you know, we watched the intro video, and, you know, here I come to find out that, and I must apologize for not remembering the original actor's name from the original there you go thank you and uh, it turns out that you were the one that was chosen to redo this role i guess you can say uh how how was that because that was one of my all-time favorite shows were you a fan of the twilight zone well i have quite a few interesting stories about the twilight zone um when i was a kid Uh uh i used to go to a place with my parents in palm springs called white sun ranch Mm -hmm. and my father being a a writer Mm -hmm. um and a, a successful writer, and Rod Serling was there, and there was another guy you wouldn't know, but he was a comedian named Louis Nye. This is a million years ago. And we would all hang out at this place, and I actually played football with Rod Serling. He played oh, catch wow. with me, and, you know, so I knew him, and my, my mother primarily was friends with Carol Serling, his wife. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. 
So that's my first contact with, with Rod Serling. Wow. What's funny about it is, is that Rod Serling had told, I guess, my father that mm-hmm. if they ever did the Sandy Koufax story that – I should play the part, you know, as a kid. But he mm-hmm. thought I looked like um, Sandy Koufax, which is kind of... I can kind of see that. <laughs> I played him. I wound up playing Rod Serling. So now years later, um, I'm an actor and doing different things. And mm-hmm. I go in for... Um, I had done an industrial commercial where I played Rod Serling. It was kind of horrible, too, because it was for some sort of eye care medical thing and mm-hmm. i had to do everything as rod serling and it just you couldn't say the words like rod serling is all like chemicals and all this <laughs> stuff. So then then a job came up joe dante who's a director who uh-huh. did a movie yeah. like toy soldiers and i think one of the gremlins or whatever yeah, he's a, yeah. quite a well-known uh, horror director uh, mm-hmm. I auditioned for him as Rod Serling. Oh, wow. And he doesn't know, of course, that I knew Rod as a kid or anything. It was mm-hmm. just a regular audition. Anyhow, I wound up getting it. And then um, it was shot at Disney Imagineering in this kind of warehouse where they actually built the whole set. Oh, wow. So what Joe Dante did is he kind of shot an episode that goes onto this ride. And uh, I portrayed Rod in the piece. So my makeup was done by one of the makeup people who did the, the movie The Fly. Oh, and wow. It looked even more like Rod Serling. Oh, and Carol Serling had approved me, by the way, to play <laughs> oh, wow. Rod Serling because she saw pictures and she, you know, I, I look enough like him and I can kind of do a good impression of him. So uh, uh, Pretty, pretty up, darn good. Pretty darn good, if yeah. I may say so myself. So, so uh, when they opened the ride in Disney Orlando, Florida, uh, and actually, if you go to uh, my site, robertrine.com, that's my own personal site. If you go, there's a there's a link there that sends you to a whole article that Disney wrote about it. Part of the deal that I made was for ten years I wasn't allowed to say that it was me. Oh, really? So the reason they the oh. reason they shot me doing this is there were certain things they needed said that uh, they didn't have from a TV show that, that they wanted to add. So mm-hmm. they needed to add a few little things here and there. So. That's that's a story for it. Um, I do remember that the hair person put butch wax in my hair, and uh, it didn't want to come out. Really? So I had to have my hair washed, like with ammonia and bleach. All this oh stuff. my oh, goodness! Wow. I'm surprised I still have hair. So uh, it was kind of fun and crazy story. So yeah, that was uh, that was the the thing. So. I assume you've been on the ride yourself. Um, how was it watching yeah. yourself <laughs> in front of you? Well, I have a, a, a funny story about that, too, because <laughs> a guy contacted me. He had a site that I don't even think is around anymore, but it was called like the, the 12th floor or the 13th floor or something. And mm-hmm. they wanted me to go down there as Rod Serling to uh, Disneyland uh, mm-hmm. to ride it. And they were going to film it and take pictures. Mm-hmm. First, they took me to lunch at this thing called Club 33. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. It's kind of like behind the Pirates of the Caribbean. And yeah, it's like and a door that looks right? like nothing. And you walk in and it's just beautiful ritzy club with, yeah you know, it's a fortune i think it's like a twenty five thousand dollar membership <clears throat> just to you know go oh yeah it's a pretty mm-hmm. exclusive yeah 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 very exclusive so i here i am as rod serling on the right so i'm having a great time as rod serling in there and everyone's loving it and i had this great big lunch and all leading up to going on the ride, and I had never been on the ride. I had <laughs> never gone on the ride. So here I am with this crew, and I'm laughing, and I'm having a great time. I'm not thinking about the ride at all, because I had read the script years ago, and I'm like, ah, eh, you know, it drops. Mm-hmm. A little cute little thing, and it's kind of fun. <laughs> I get on this ride with this guy. I'm sitting next to him. I, it scared literally the tar out of me. I, <laughs> I left like fingernail marks in this guy's shoulder. Oh, wow. I'm telling you, it scared me to death. And I've done free fall from, you know, like, I don't know, 12,000 feet. I wasn't as scared. For some reason, if you haven't gone on this ride, some I, kids love it, but it, it's, it's kind of terrifying. <laughs> so I, 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 it was not, I didn't enjoy the ride at all. So I think they've got pictures of Rod Serling, myself, screaming like a girl. Really? Uh, yeah, screaming like a little girl. Not, you know, a, a girl scream. Everyone screams on the ride. But I was, yeah, I was screeching. I, it just scared me to death. That's so that's so my funny. Rod Serling story. But he was very nice. I remember he told my father uh, uh, he couldn't 
understand. My father was a comedy writer. He mm-hmm. couldn't understand how he could write comedy. And my dad was, of course, he couldn't understand he could write um, drama. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there, you know, but he, he was a lovely man. One of the things that I wanted to ask you about in one of the email exchanges that we're having, you mentioned that you believe it's spirits in graveyards. And what can you tell me about this? Have you had any experiences with what you believe to be spirits of the dead in yeah. graveyards? Yeah, I have. And I think that's what it takes for people to believe things. Until something right. happens to them, I think it's, eh, you can't quite believe it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, first of all, through my magazine, I talked to lots of um, uh, funeral home workers mm-hmm. and, and also people that drive hearses. and Not hearses so much, but more like, uh, you know, ambulances or people taking bodies to morgues and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And I'll tell you, uh, consistently, the people that work in that business tell me about ghost stories. Really? Things that happen, things that are open or closed. There was a guy at one funeral home, and he'd been there, and I guess he was working in the morgue. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. uh, every night he, he would listen to music. So, you know, at the end of the day, he turned off the music, and he, he locked off, and he turned off the lights, and he got in his car, and he left. And then as he was leaving, and he was the last one there, all of a sudden the lights went back on and the music started playing. Oh, wow. You know, and so there's things like that. But... Okay, so people are still skeptical. So I'm going to tell you a story mm-hmm. that happened to me. Um, we did our first uh, cover shoot when we went to print, when we were first online, then we went to print. Mm-hmm. And we were fortunate enough to get Sherry Moon Zombie, who mm. uh, is married to Rob Zombie, yeah. but was also the lead in The Devil's Rejects, yeah, After yeah. the Thousand Corpses, and you know other movies of his since then. But she was like the perfect person to get on this first cover, very well-known in that genre, yeah. a very well admired uh, actress. Mm-hmm. So we shot at uh, a cemetery called Hollywood Forever in uh, Los Angeles, and and actually Rob Zombie helped uh, arrange so we could shoot there um, because they don't, you know, without a huge fee. You know, if you're in Hollywood, everything costs. You know, right, you know? right. So uh, he helped us get in there. So uh, when we were shooting her, we had her up against a. Uh, kind of a large stone cross that we were shooting. Um, and and I, then, then we moved her in front of kind of a mausoleum so she could lay on top. Mm-hmm. Wow. So now she's laying on top of a mausoleum. I, you know, we're already breaking every sort of spiritual rule. <laughs> so we've got her laying on someone, <laughs> basically they're gray. Right. And she's wearing a um, pink coat, and she's got a pink umbrella, and she's got like pink thigh-high boots. And at the time, this is a big deal. People, if they shot in a graveyard, they'd have people in black colors and morbid and everything. Right, we're right. all about color and all this kind of thing. So now we're shooting, and I thought, you know, something's missing missing from the shot. And I thought, you know what it is? It's flowers. I need a, a, some flowers on the on the stone there, mm-hmm. and we've mm-hmm. forgotten to bring them. So I looked around the cemetery, and I saw some flowers on a grave, and I thought, you know, I'll just borrow them just for the shot. <laughs> Not the deal. They're dead. What are they going to write? So I grabbed the flowers, and the flowers were in a bucket. Uh-huh. They're kind of in a bucket, pretty flowers. So I bring them up. We put them down. We get the shots. I get the photos back, and my photographer says, i, I got to tell you, there's something really weird in the photos. And I go, mm-hmm. what? So he shows me the pictures, and all of them just show her on the stone with the flowers there except one. Mm. And in that one photo, there is a kind of faded white-ish thing coming out of the flowers no. in the photo. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I went on my computer and looked at it at different kind of resolutions, uh-huh. and it looks like there's a little tiny ghosty spine on with a head connected into the bucket. Oh, wow. Now, uh, I ran that in, in the issue uh-huh. um, in the magazine and, and explained, you know, and, and cop to it, and it turns out, when I had put the flowers back, I didn't notice when I took them, but when I put mm-hmm. them back, it yeah. was a, a little boy's grave. When I saw the picture back, it was a small head with this little spine going into the flowers. Now, so I talked to my photographer. I said, is it a lens flare? He goes, well, there's nothing on any of the other uh, pictures. Mm-hmm. We shot after the, the sun had gone down a little bit, so there's no sun hitting anything. Mm-hmm. There's not like a reflector. There was no flash. It's only in this one shot. And if it had been anywhere else in the picture... But coming out of this bucket of flowers, I might not have thought anything about it. But mm-hmm. it's the shape of a kid's head with a little spot. Now, I've sent it to just various people. Mm-hmm. You know, I put it on a couple of spirit sites and things like that. Matter of fact, I'll tell you what. 
if you guys, um, at the moment, my internet's down. <laughs> Funny story, I went out today because, you know, we're expecting El Nino. Oh, yeah. So I decided <laughs> I would trim some plants around my roof, <laughs> and I wound up cutting my wire. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness, no. Yes, honest to God. So I have no computer right now. But I might be able to figure out within a day or so if I get this thing running to send you the picture. Oh, that would be no, great. Yeah, we'll put it up on our website. So, so you can... Yeah, so you can put it up on your website. It's just really unbelievable. So then I wrote an article from a guy, guy wrote a crazy book, um, uh -huh. where he would go to people's houses. It was a, a clean, you know, like, a, uh, I'm forgetting. It's like when they clean up, you know, after a crime scene. Crime oh. scene cleanup. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. Crime scene cleanup. So he would go, but what they started doing is these guys, they were robbing people. Oh, what? So, he, yeah, because, you know, they close up the house yeah. and uh -huh. came around it. And they go and clean, and then they they rattle through the drawers and rob people. Oh and they wrote my! A book about it. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, uh, and of course, he got in, you know he got in trouble. And yeah, yeah. Stuff happened. Mm -hmm. you know? But interesting story for those people out there when someone dies in your house and you leave it with some unknown workers to come through. Uh -huh. it's a terrible job. I mean, you're literally cleaning uh, brain pieces off. Yeah. Of right. Right. When people commit suicide. Uh, so. Um, uh, he would. He told me, I think it was him that told me that sometimes when they were driving bodies in their car, that they would talk. So you go, well, how does? And people are like, ah. But so how does someone talk? Supposedly he said that the last words that are in the person when they were, let's say it's help, uh -huh. mm -hmm. okay, that they were thinking but they didn't say. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if they're moved or touched in a certain way around their chest, the air thing might come out and be like, help! Oh that's my just, god. That's freaky. Now, I've heard this from a couple people. Uh -huh. Some people say no, and then, but I, I've heard this where there can be a last word. Now, they know about the situation of people sitting up because mm -hmm. of air pockets. They can move. There are things like this. So people get freaked out by that. It can be from natural causes, but I thought it was pretty interesting that, uh, you know, that <laughs> is could actually... That, there that, are definitely certain work. jobs I would never want to have. I remember meeting a girl back in England. She was an embalmer. I I never even yeah. thought that you know someone sits there and does that job. And I was like, wow, you're you're an embalmer. Wow, just I don't think I could do that. Like that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of girls that dig that job, and we feature them. You know, we mm -hmm. get a lot of pretty girls. You know, it's kind of a thing. They like to work with the uh, work with the dead. I understand it. I've been to autopsies myself, and they're, mm -hmm. they're pretty fascinating. As we can tell, you do a lot of stuff, not just with the Girls and Corpses magazine, but you, you do a lot of writing, you, you do a lot of film work. Can you tell us, what are your top five horror films that have influenced you or have stayed with you over the years? If you go over, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, it can be more easy. than five. <laughs> well, uh, you know, my favorite horror movie of all time is Jaws. Nice. I think people are a little shocked that they go, Jaws isn't a horror movie, but it most definitely is a horror movie with I a monster. Agree. Yeah. I agree. Oh, yeah. So uh, that would probably be my top one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I love, I love Poltergeist, and I actually had an opportunity to uh, work on the advertising uh, for that. Oh, really? So, uh, yeah, um, I was writing ad copy for different companies, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. they would bring me in to write the uh, ad lines, or mm -hmm. sometimes rename movies and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. When I worked on that movie, you know, they'd either screen it for me or give me a script. I got the Poltergeist script a long time before it came out. Mm -hmm. you know, I was living that time in Venice, I had a little apartment over there, mm -hmm. and I was reading Poltergeist script, and I couldn't put it down, and I was just terrified. Because in your mind, some of it's even worse. And when I got to the swimming pool scene, uh -huh. where the bodies are floating around, yeah, I yeah. just couldn't believe they could get this movie made the way they... And I think they did a, did a great job. Oh, it was so, amazing. Uh, Poltergeist is on there. Um, I love uh, Alien, and actually Aliens is a sequel. I'm going to put those together as one. Okay. Mm -hmm. But um, two of my very good friends, Tom Woodruff and Alec Gillis, run a company called Amalgamated Dynamics. Mm -hmm. And years ago, I used to work for the studios as a unit publicist promoting mm -hmm. films uh, on the road. You know, be, uh, I'd be part of the film. And I uh, did a movie called Tremors with uh, uh, Tom and Alec. So uh, I have a lot of great stories from them doing Ailey. So they were 
uh, actually Tom Woodruff is, is in the alien costume almost in each of the movies. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he has interesting stories. And then they took over the franchise from Stan Winston. Uh, but I thought that, you know, I remember watching the chest bursting scene, mm-hmm. in the first mm-hmm. alien movie, and I'm l- witnessing people run out of the theater. It was unbelievable. <laughs> And nice. similar to that would be another favorite movie, which is The Exorcist. Oh, yeah. So I, I remember uh, when that movie came out, it was the first time I remember seeing lines around the blocks. Oh, wow. And, and you know, now you see it, and it's like, eh, it doesn't scare you. But this was this was really concrete horror. To be, yeah. This was, people were really getting sick and not And because it was based on a sort of a religious uh, reality, mm-hmm. uh, it affected people. So... Uh, Exorcist. I'll watch it every time it's on. It's still brilliant. Um, of course, Psycho has got to be on right. the list. Right. Right. Um, just brilliant, brilliant film in every way. Uh, of course, you know, Alfred Hitchcock is just phenomenal. Absolutely. Um, let's see what else. I love Shaun of the Dead, and I think that's uh, probably one of the films that. Uh, made me love comedy and horror together. Mm, Have right. you guys seen Shaun of the Dead? Yeah, Night? yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a fun, it's just mm-hmm. fun flick. <laughs> great movie. Um, I may be past my limit, but let me think what no, else. No, it's okay. No, Silence, no. Of the, Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, uh, I thought was brilliant. Uh, done in a very serious, dramatic way. Uh, phenomenal uh, film. Um, I think Poltergeist. Uh, a Misery. Mm-hmm. I think is a great film. Uh huh. I love Misery. <laughs> I love Misery. <laughs> I, I t- I'll watch that every time it's on. And there's a lot of comedy in that. And comedy, you know, really dark moments. That's to me, that contrast is what attracts me and, yeah. and makes me want to do like uh, Girls and Corpses. And of course, The uh, the Devil's Rejects yeah. is another film. And, and uh, being friendly with, uh, good friends with a lot of people from that movie. Now, um, Sid Haig who is the clown guy mm-hmm. in, the, in the movies, yeah. uh, Captain Spaulding. Um, I don't know if you guys saw House of a Thousand Corpses yeah. or mm-hmm. Devil's mm-hmm. Rejects. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's a phenomenal uh, actor, a great person, and he signed with me at many of my events. So he'll sit with me and we hang out. Oh, that's he's just cool. a great guy, uh, you know. So uh, he was on two covers of, oh, three covers. We've done three oh, wow. covers with Sid Haig. The first one was on a, a, a yacht, because I always make him a captain, because of Captain Spaulding. So he was on a yacht. We had seven gorgeous models in bikinis, and we shot him on a yacht, but he's the corpse. He's dead. <laughs> That's the first one. Uh, and Scout Taylor Compton, who was in Rob Zombie's a remakes of Halloween. Right. I don't know if the remakes are his own, what we would call those, but... He's reboots, called, he's, I think they call him. Reboots. Re- reboots. Reboots yeah. of, of his Halloween. She was a Lori Strode in the two um, in the two ones that Rob Zombie did. Nice. So she was uh, on two of the covers with Sid Haig. The second cover with Sid Haig, we were on an airline in, inside of a jet in the the cockpit, and it's Sid Haig, and he was dressed like a, a captain of a of an airliner. And Scout Taylor Compton was a uh, kind of a 1970s stewardess. That was a third. And, and, and the uh, next one we did with Sid Haig was recently we did the Gilligan's Cannibal Island. And that was a blast. And nice. we had uh, uh, Billy Mosley from Devil's Rejects. He played, uh, we call him Billigan. Then we had <laughs> Sid Haig as the skipper. And, you know, they're dressed identical to the show. Mm-hmm. Then we had uh, Ginger Lynn, who was a huge porn star in the 80s, yeah. uh, playing Ginger. <laughs> um, nice. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was a blast. So we had, you know, uh, a cannibal thing. And we did, you know, a whole shoot with a big pot of, like, uh, you know, cauldron, and they're all getting cooked and stuff. And I also had uh, Daniel Harris, who was in Halloween 4 or 5 as a little girl. She also was on our second print issue she was on the cover nice. and bill mosley we did a religion is dead issue with him as well so i you know there's a lot of rob zombie people around uh, uh-huh. uh mm-hmm. who you know who we shoot but not all of them but i'm just saying it's uh it's a nice family to be a part of. No, absolutely, absolutely. I I I love Rob Zombie's work. He's a, an amazingly creative individual, to say the least. Let me see some comments here in the chat room. Uh, Tony Merlo said, uh, "Let me see what do we got here." Uh, the broken ankle scene in Mystery. 
was the worst thing ever. Uh, Professor Madness is asking uh, that you never said anything about the original Texas Chainsaw movie. And no love for the original Texas, or it just wasn't quite up uh, there with your list? I, I think it's a great choice. It mm -hmm. really is. I think it doesn't have humor in it for me. It's, it's humorless. Mm -hmm. And I, I, if you look at those movies, I mean, Poltergeist has humor. Yeah. What about Alien? Jaws has lots of humor. You know, there's a lot of yeah, humor yeah, yeah. in that. Shaun of the um, Dead, definitely. <laughs> Do, uh, Shaun of the Dead. Uh, Misery. Matter of fact, the gentleman who just mentioned the, uh, the hobbling thing. Yeah, it's horrible, but there's a, it's just it's a dark humor to it. No. I just, I just, you know, I mean, I know Toby Hooper. You know, he's amazing director. Mm -hmm. I, I just didn't, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It, it's great. I mean, there was just the passing of yeah. the original uh, yeah. uh, uh, Leatherface, uh, who I've met before, by the way. And, oh, wow. Well, but, um, but, yeah, but I think it's a good choice. It'd be on my top 15. I, I think, yeah, I think I stopped at 10. <laughs> 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 but, by the way, I want to mention and plug, uh -huh. um, I, I'm hoping that, uh, and I believe, because I'm involved in, in the film, the uh -huh. A uh, new film from Rob Zombie is called 31. Mm -hmm. It is being released this year. Uh, I'm going to the premiere in Los Angeles in uh, like about three, well, three or four weeks. It's right at the end of January. Nice. And I'm a, an executive producer on the film. Very cool. I'm very excited by it because Rob uh, uh, has been, has really helped the magazine. Right. I have to say, he, he helped launch it. You know, what was more spiritual rather than financial. Mm -hmm. but by the people that he helped me get, mm -hmm. uh, he got the magazine, and and he came to our first shoot. By the way, total cool guy, wow. you know, very normal and and completely in love with Sherry Moon, who's also in uh, Thirty One. Yeah. Also, my friend uh, Ginger Lynn is in Thirty One. Nice. She plays mm -hmm. Cherry Bomb. Um, I can't reveal details to it. The only thing I can tell you for the people that don't know is it's a very cool idea that Rob found out that. Uh, on the 31st of Halloween, more people go missing than any time of the year. Oh, no, no way. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. You literally just, that, that already scares me. <laughs> yeah, it's a great hook. And, and the people go to a place called Murder World where they have to fight to survive. The oh, my God. So I, I can't tell much more about that. It is, it is going to be screened at uh, Sundance. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. um, and what I will say is, is that a lot of heat that Rob's taken is from movies that he remade, hmm. or the reboots of Halloween. Very tough thing to do. I have yeah. to like them. There's people out there that are going to throw their uh, radio across the room or whatever because uh -huh. they were very upset about it, but there are parts of it that I really did like, uh, and I just happen to be a fan of his. Mm -hmm. So I think 31, for the people that have lost faith, Give this one a chance. Oh boy. Because it's back in the realm of The Devil's Reject and House of a Thousand Corpses. If that's what you liked and you felt he went away from, mm -hmm. he has run back there, and this movie, everybody should check out. This oh, is be wow. A great one. No, it well, sounds I know, exciting. Been keep, excited. I know we've been keeping up with a couple of the mini, like, teaser snippets and interviews. Um, on YouTube, there's a couple that um, are out on YouTube of Rob Zombie about talking about 31. And Professor Madness is asking if the movie has a rating yet. Uh, apparently, from yeah. what he's posted, it's it's gone through the censors no, three it's times. Been rated. It, well, it's NC-17 is the final nice. rating on it. That's how you know it's going to be good. <laughs> so you opinion. know it's going to be messed up. You lose a little bit of your audience, and you lose certain theaters. Uh -huh. um, you know the other thing, and it's it's just so sad about movies. It's just What's killing the movie industry is these this pirating. Mm, uh, right. People make an amazing movie. Um, matter of fact, I'm a member of the Academy, so I get all the the films uh -huh. that they want you to watch. Like uh, I just got Revenant. Uh, I watched the other night, which mm -hmm. is uh, mm -hmm. the, the new film coming out. Now, what people do is they get these Academy tapes, and believe it or not, some people either they get stolen from them or whatever, and they come out before the movie's released. Oh, wow. And I oh, believe crazy. that, um, what was the movie? Oh, The Hateful Eight. Uh, oh, yeah, I heard. Theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's been downloaded, I think, seven or 800,000 times already. Yeah. Oh, um, wow. So it's a, it's a very difficult thing to uh, control, and that's why uh, people are so careful yeah, of about course. Uh, screenings and things like this. Uh, with guards, you know, these screenings will be very, very tight. 
that mm-hmm. you know was searched and metal detectors and all this kind of thing because it's killing the industry. Who's going to make movies? You know, um, and now by the way, we were talking earlier about the branding. Now, Girls and Corpses has become a uh, film label. And, oh wow! Uh, we oh, that's made cool. a deal with a company called Tomcat Films. It's been around a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, Matter of fact, they go back to the original Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, Ted Chalmers was involved in the distribution, oh, distribution wow. of that at Tomcat, uh, and also Reanimator, uh, a lot of films. So uh, he wanted to do a Girls and Corpses Presents label, mm-hmm. and we've already released uh, two films, uh, The Meat Puppet and Blood Rights, and uh, we have another movie we've picked up called Aztec Blood, which is coming out. Mm-hmm. And we're very close. I can't give you too many details, but to, to uh, financing our own uh, fairly substantial budget production through Girls and Corpses. Oh, that is exciting. Uh, so that that's will be really uh, cool. this is the first place I've even announced that. So that's that's in the works for this year. So we're oh, putting wow. together the details to make that film. In addition to that, uh, I've been getting killed in all these movies. <laughs> so the last two years I've been killed like in 20 films. And, and some of them <laughs> are actually cool. kind of fun parts. I have... Movies coming out this year. One is uh, Dracula in a Woman's Prison, and I actually play <laughs> Dracula. Oh, really? Oh, wow. a, a blast. Um, that'll be coming out this year, and it's also well, we don't know if it's Tomcat yet, but it's. Uh, I'll let you guys know when that's going to be coming out. Also, Frankenstein created bikers. This is from James Bickert, uh, who did a movie called Dear God No. Mm-hmm. And if you guys haven't seen that, go. Everyone should go out and watch this grindhouse biker violent crazy movie um i, get I have to watch it well. now <laughs> um there's a movie that's uh just went on to uh vimeo you can check it out it's called the orphan killer bound by blood and wow. this is let me write that definitely down definitely not for the squeamish really <laughs> it is oh yeah very very gory and violent extremely nice. gory if your fans out there wanted to you know like with, with death metal music and real gore that is, you know, the first one uh, I covered in the magazine called The Orphan Killer. This is the sequel. But anyhow, I'm in the movie uh, as well. Nice. So you mm-hmm. can see what, uh, what demise I come about with. Um, I have another movie called Aliens vs. Titanic, uh, <laughs> and I, I play the captain of the Titanic. I'm trying to think I, I think I saw this. pictures of that online. I did. I did. Yeah. Uh, you <laughs> look you fun. looked very cool as, like, the. it was, like, a, ironically, a corpsey Titanic captain, right? Well, I grew a I grew a beard for it, so it, it, I well, very I, I, much like yeah. I remember like the the oh, the filter was very like blue and pale or something. Yeah, well, that might just be me. <laughs> I'm a little a little dead. But yeah, no, it it, know, it looked very cool. So there, there's a lot of these uh, films. I mean, that are coming out. You know, you can IMDb me, IMDb Robert Ryan, R H I N E, and you'll see the movies that I have coming out. As a producer, I'm the executive producer of Parasites, mm-hmm. which is terrific film, a uh, horror film about the homeless. Oh, wow. That. And uh, Joe Pilato is in it, who is in uh, uh, Dawn of the Dead. No, I think it was Day of the Dead, the lead, one of the leads in it. And another guy, Robert Miano, who is in Danny Brasco. Mm. Uh, he was in that film, and uh, he, he's also in it. So I play a homeless guy in that. Uh-huh. There's a movie called The Chair, yes, which that, is Rowdy Roddy Piper's The last trailer movie. looks so oh, great for yeah. that. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet, but we were watching the trailer, and I don't know if you could tell us a little bit about, about that, how you got involved. Just the storyline itself is very interesting. Uh, it comes from a comic book. Uh, Arcana Comics, uh, Peter Samiti, he is a uh, writer and has a comic book company, and he wound up raising money to make The Chair, which was one of their comic books. So... Um, he got Roddy Rowdy Piper nice. to play mm-hmm. the, uh, the the head guard, and this was his last movie mm-hmm. that he uh, filmed. And and as crazy as it is, I did his last interview. No he, way. I a, yeah, I had a crew. And as a matter of fact, if you look up Roddy Rowdy Piper's last interview, I mean, this thing went was viral because it went on the wrestling magazine uh-huh. and all this stuff. Because mm-hmm. I did this video interview with him, and it's crazy because I get killed in the film, so. I'm talking to him, and I'm all covered, like, in blood. (laughs) And and I play Johnny the Janitor, so I'm this filthy guy to begin with, and I'm interviewing him. Totally sweet man. Just great guy. Oh, wow, Uh I bet. But but when he did his scenes, uh, he has a scene where he beats a guy 
on the floor, one of the inmates. Uh-huh. And I'll tell you, since I was laying on the floor next to the guy, very close, uh-huh. Roddy doesn't pull his punches. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. He, oh, wow. You know, uh, he was hitting it really hard. And I, when it was over, the guy got oh, up and he was goodness. trying to be cool about it. But Roddy really put it to him. Oh, you know, wow. This is how, you know, that's why... As a wrestler, when people say wrestling is real or fake, yeah. well, their injuries are real. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, mm-hmm. they, you know, so, uh, but the movie is basically about a, a guy that's um, imprisoned and it's on death row mm-hmm. and there's a crazed warden and <laughs> the conditions are just horrible. And um, it's really, it's really a fun film. It's the same director of The Chair and Parasites. So okay. uh, you should guys should check that out. Yeah, no, definitely we'll, we'll definitely do. We'll definitely Ch- check oh, that way, out. Chad Farron uh, is the director. Chad Farron. Um, and I'm so I'm a executive producer on both of those uh, films. And uh, then there's a movie called You Found Me coming out. I'm in two. I play a killer. <laughs> you play a lot of great roles. <laughs> you do. I, I, you know, I'm a character actor. I started out as an actor when I was younger, and then I got. You know, it's funny because. When I did the whole acting thing with agents, and for people that have never done this, you know, you go to these rooms and casting, and mm-hmm. it's terrible. And most of these things are cast already. You mm-hmm. just don't know it, but they're, you're a backup or whatever. And, and there's so many people, and it's a really terrible process. So I, at some point, just said, you know what, I'm just going to do the writing or whatever. But now when I started the magazine, all of a sudden I started getting parts again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it was just weird how that happened. And, and so I, I keep doing these films and getting to play these really fun character roles. So I'm, I'm having a blast, uh, a blast doing that. I have another one I just did called Giantess, um, uh, which is sort of like Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. So that's, so that's you know, I don't know. It's, it's, it's fun. It's really crazy because you sound like a, a really busy guy doing all these things. I don't, honestly, I don't know where you find the time in a day to do all these projects. But let me ask you about, real quick, have you received any pushback for doing a magazine like Girls and Corpses? I mean, I, I, I imagine you have a lot of fans and a lot of people who are intrigued and, and pick up the magazine. But have you, you know, encountered any criticism for putting out a, a, a magazine with that type of material? Well, first of all, I, I protected myself a little bit in the sense that I don't have nudity. If right. People uh-huh. who want to hate the magazine really wish it had nudity because then they could really hate me. The other thing is that I love uh, contrast and conflict. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. to me, when we were running letters in the magazine and people go, oh my God, this is the most amazing magazine. I love it. How do I get it? This is boring. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's boring. No one hears it. But when the church writes you, like they did to me from uh, the Crystal Cathedral, and say, <laughs> you know, we hope you and your corpses rot in hell. Yeah, and that's in you know? Orange County, right? Well, it was. What's funny about the story is, is that here they uh, wrote me this, you know, and hating on me, uh-huh. and it wound up that the same people that were running that we're ripping everybody off. They all went bankrupt. They were, they stole millions of dollars. You know? oh, wow. So I always say that there's nothing that we can, can do that will touch a fraction uh-huh, of what uh-huh. the church could do in, in, in a zillion years. I don't know if you guys saw, uh, this movie Spotlight. No, I don't think. No, we haven't. I have not. Spotlight. No. Yeah, Michael Keaton's in it. It's a hmm. big movie. It, it'll be up for awards this year. It's about the Boston Globe. When they broke the story, they thought it was like one pedophile uh-huh. price. It turned out, then they thought there were 14, and it turned out there were 90. Oh, wow. And oh, then wow. It, it just completely exploded. So it, it, it's, a, it's, a huge, it's a huge problem, and, and uh, I, I think it still is a problem. That's why we did a religion is dead issue. So we get we got letters from the church. Mm-hmm. I remember a couple fun letters. I got one from a woman who said that her son was on the web and he looked at my site and he threw up all over his keyboard, <laughs> and that she wanted me to pay for his new uh, laptop. Or really? Oh wow! Yeah. So I said I said I'm more than happy to pay for the laptop. Your money is in the center lane of the 405 freeway. <laughs> is my, I retort to her on that. <laughs> Then um, I got one from a woman, and she really personalized it. She just really attacked me. She goes, she goes, y- you're very, sa- you're a very sad person. You probably never get out. You know, go outside. You know, go for a hike. Have have a meal. Travel. Have a relationship. You know. So she started li- listing. And she goes, you're probably very unattractive too. So I wrote her back. And I said, well, let me let me see if I can explain this to you. Um, I'm an avid hiker. Matter of fact, I was a hike leader 
uh, for a company called A16. I've done more trails <laughs> in this area than many people wow. have actually followed me. I just did a hike, matter of fact, yesterday where, and I was going to tell you guys because I thought you'd get a kick out of this. Uh-huh. I go where there are cars, you know, Mulholland Falls, the famous Mulholland uh-huh. Falls. Uh-huh where they would have criminals and people would be killed and thrown over. Well, it turns out that way down in those canyons, there's cars. Oh, really? really? That have, are down there. And That's I've been hiking down with a friend of mine who's an amazing hiker, and uh-huh. we've been taking pictures, and, and I, I've been posting them and finding out what they are. So, But anyhow, so she talks about the hiking. I mean, I've hiked all over the place. I, do, I was leading a hike for um, kids from Covenant House. Yeah. It, or, or were, you know, off the street. These are mm-hmm, kids that had never mm-hmm. been mm-hmm. anywhere other than just, you know, pavement. Yeah. And they're all, you know, ex-drug addicts and they've been abused. And I would take them up in the mountains for moonlight hikes. And I did that for five years. And then she said, you know, you go get a good meal. Well, I'm a gourmand. I've, cooked, <laughs> I've guest chefed in restaurants. And I've gone to over 100 Michelin star restaurants all over the world. Mm-hmm, I'm an mm-hmm. avid traveler. I've been all over the place. You know, I mean, I've, and I've driven, like, probably all over Europe, almost every country wow. I've driven. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm just saying, you know, it, it's just funny to me that because of this magazine, she just thought I was just such a pathetic person. Right. Yeah, but you're one way, of the bubbliest yeah. persons I've met. Yeah, well, and then I said, well, you're probably right, I am not very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Everything was right. But I was just, she really didn't, didn't get it. Uh, this magazine has a lot of interesting things in it. It's... It has the comedy, mm-hmm. but it is a magazine about something people have never wanted to write about, and that's the subject of death. Yeah. Uh, everybody will share this experience. We all have our births, and there's a lot of magazines about parenting and birth and yeah. uh, childbirth and all this, but mm-hmm. there's never been a magazine about death. And, and to do it in a serious manner, no one would read it. But in a comedic format, where there's other things yeah. you can look at, mm-hmm. it allows people to learn about this experience that we're all going to share um, by interviewing people that work in that business. The funny thing is, is not that I'm you know interested in dying because I'm, I'm enjoying life, mm-hmm. but it does, the more you look at it, instead of running away from it, you actually get a little more comfort. And if you think about it, it's like anything. Let's say you're going on a, a camping trip. Well, you could just go on a camping trip and not know what the hell you're doing. Or before you go, you could read up on how to put the tent up properly, what kind of foods to bring, you know. Yeah. 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 And, and I, I'm just saying, this is something, you know, how do you prepare for it? Well, at least have it as part of your knowledge base. And I think people reading Girls and Corpses, I've gotten letters from people saying that they were always terrified of, of death, and who wouldn't be, mm-hmm. but that the magazine has actually helped them through some of this. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There's amazing things. I send this magazine, you know, as I said, all over the world, but I send it to our troops for free. Nice. Uh, whenever we get a request uh, from our service people mm-hmm. in Afghan- Afghanistan or Iraq, uh, I always send uh, a big box of magazines, and they all pass it around, and they send me pictures with their guns holding up my magazine. So, <laughs> That's really uh, cool. We we do good things, and I think the magazine has a uh, a purpose that um, it, it is a subject, and there's there's amazing stuff in it. Yeah, we get definitely. some of the top people in the world. We just ran an article that was fascinating in this new issue about uh, this these people in Malaysia who you know. Uh, every year they take their family out of their uh, internment in, yeah. in their coffin, yeah, yeah. and they bring them home. Mm-hmm. They bring them home, they walk them around the town, they put them in a, give them a bedroom, you know, and, and the, uh, the, uh, the thought is, is that, you know, what a freaky thing, mm-hmm. but is that freakier or the fact that people die and then we put them, we bury them, and, you know, unless you visit the grave, you know, most people want nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. Right. But in mm-hmm. their case... They're still their family, and although their soul is gone, they still want to be close. And, you know, this is a different culture, how they deal with it. So uh, yeah, I, I think yeah. there's a lot to learn. And, and uh, you know, hopefully your audience will uh, check out girlsandcorpses.com, buy a couple copies, mm-hmm. and help support, uh, help support death. I, I know our listeners are enjoying this. Uh, well, I well, got... I'm enjoying it, and we're getting requests for a three-hour <laughs> show. <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. We won't keep you up for that long. Man. But uh, just crazy stories. <laughs> One of the last couple of questions we got. Yeah. They want to know uh, how much was cut out of the upcoming uh, Rob Zombie movie that you're working on, uh, the 30, 31. 31. 31. How much was cut out to get an NC-17 rating? Was it, was it a pretty raw film? Prior to that. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, look, I, I'm going to be real honest with you about this. Although I'm an executive producer on the film, uh-huh. uh, my access to Rob Zombie at this point of, of production, the fact that he's also on tour, is very, very limited. Uh-huh. He's a very um, private person, and he doesn't really let a lot of people into that process of his oh. decision-making. Okay. So I can't even answer that. And, and probably the only person who might be able to answer it is Rob and maybe his editor. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, mm-hmm. But outside of that, he... He's just a private person, and um, you know he doesn't want many outside voices, so right. I don't have an answer for that, unfortunately. Understandably so. Yeah. Um, with this latest issue of Girls and uh, Corpses, you got one of my all-time favorite actors, which is Danny Trejo. I mean, ever since I saw him in Heat, I was a fan uh, of such an iconic movie, and of course he's been in, in so many great films ever since. Uh, how did you go about uh, getting Danny on, on your issue? Did he approach you guys? Was it like a mutual thing? Uh, was he a fan already? How did that come about? Well, he is a fan, uh-huh. and he was, is, is in within our uh, grouping of people that love and subscribe to the magazine. Um, uh, like uh, Eli Roth is a big fan of the magazine, mm-hmm. and he's mm-hmm. done events with us, and we adore. He's a terrific guy. Quentin Tarantino says it's his favorite magazine. You know, oh wow, we, so because good. of guys like Sid Haig and Billy Mosley, and um, so he knows of the magazine. Then also, I've met him, Danny, a couple times. Uh-huh. Um, and matter of fact, he spoke to Covenant House that I mentioned earlier. You know, he's a mm-hmm. drug counselor. He is oh, today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, matter of fact, um, I'll see if I can send you the link when my computer's back up. Uh-huh. But uh, you might be able to see it if you go to my Facebook or something. But I did also a, an interview with him on camera as well mm-hmm. and talked about a lot of interesting stuff. When we Very did the cool. shoot. We actually shot at his house. It was great. And um, uh, this, do, you, do you know who Danny Devine is? Since you're from uh, you're from England. Yeah. No, you, I've you I've, I've seen I've seen her a few times at um, like golf clubs around London. <laughs> Golf clubs, very yes. interesting. Yeah, very interesting. Fun, well, look her fun up. She's golf an clubs. Amazing model, and she was so excited to meet uh, meet Danny. So, you know, I talked to his manager. Uh-huh. They got in touch with him. He uh, really wanted to do it, um, and uh, that, that's it. Wow, you know, it was a that's subject so cool. that he was interested in, which is motorcycles. Mm-hmm. We have. Uh, two of his motorcycles are in the magazine. Um, one is the uh, um, is the machete bike, which has a lot of images from the machete. Oh, movie. nice! And uh-huh. then um, there's a, another motorcycle that he rode when he was on um, a- uh, Sons of Anarchy, right? Which mm-hmm. is an or- orange bike. We have a double. Not only do we have a photo shoot, you know, for one cover, we've got a <laughs> double cover on all of our. Nice. Issues. We have a front cover and a back cover. And, and I think different. we have the back cover yeah, we- online right now, so anyone watching on uh, Ustream, Ustream can yeah. actually see the front cover. We're we're displaying that right now. <laughs> the, the the back one is the orange one, and the other yeah. one is the black and red one. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, with Danny's head. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a there's a ten page spread inside that's really cool mm-hmm. with Danny getting his head cut off by a machete. <laughs> and, you know, it's all sort of. I'll tell you a story. When we were shooting this, uh-huh. uh, we shot at it, at his home, um, where by the way he has a garage that says Machete's Garage. On, on <laughs> nice machete. And he's got beautiful cars and everything. We were having a heat wave in Los Angeles at the time. Mm-hmm. And it was like 103 and terribly humid that day. And we had him wearing, we bought, you know, a costume, which was a, a leather vest and leather pants. And it was brutal. I mean, wow. and we were shooting in the sun. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, I think it was the fastest shoot we ever did. I think we had like <laughs> an hour and a half. And we kept shooting. He went, okay, we're done with that. Let's move on. <laughs> you know, you know? But I'll tell you, there... Uh, Having worked in the the business on a lot of films and and worked in, and met a lot of guys that play bad guys, mm-hmm. the bad guys are always the coolest people, the character actors. Right. They're, yeah. Usually they play these kind of people, but they're really nice. And Danny Trejo is just a really super nice guy. Um, but then I worked on movies, and the nice guys turn out to be the assholes. They're the attitude <laughs> or whatever you know, is going on. So uh, I always like character actors. And once again, Sid Haig is a rare, rare bird. Um, and uh, you should, you know, as a matter of fact, I'd probably get him on your show at some point. Oh, that would be awesome. No, we would love wow. to talk to him. He's, he's, he's such an amazing actor, and he's been on some really, really cool films. So, no, that, that would be great. Yeah, no, we would love to talk to him. And uh, I was going to say that there's a little interview as well, like a video interview on YouTube or on the website um, with Danny Trejo and uh, yeah. Danny Devine that you can check out. We got her on the interview, too. It's uh-huh. very, very cute. Yeah, she, very cute. She's gorgeous. You know, she's just like, wow. 
you know, mm-hmm. we work with a lot of a lot of models. So, just for your listeners, I'm just finishing up. Well, it was done, but it's back in the shop. But I have a 1959 Cadillac hearse. Oh my in God! Uh, oh, completely dear. restored from junkyard to uh, show car. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's back in the shop because it's you know it's it's like always at the beauty parlor. Uh-huh. You know? So she's in the shop. Getting the wires fixed again. Um, but it's great. And my license plate says Corpsey on it. Nice. Oh, I remember we, seeing the Yeah, picture. we saw the picture. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. That and picture really, can be seen on Facebook. Uh, I couldn't believe I got that. You know, you have to, it's a, you know, vanity plate. Yeah. You have to request three different ones. So I was very happy to get Corpsey. But, and you got the black uh, one, right? I don't know. I, I think those are just yeah. barely starting to roll out again, the, the black plates. The, the, yeah, it's yeah. super these cool. Vintage, uh, these are the plates they would have been at the time. They're black right. mm-hmm. background with yellow letters. Yeah, yeah. So that's what it would have been in 1959. Nice. This is an extremely collectible hearse that is very sought after because it also is the um, Ghostbuster car. And right. what people do is if they get those 59 hearses, they, uh, Cadillac hearses, uh-huh. they um, paint them white and put all the, you know, the things from Ghostbusters on them. So what I wanted to do is not make it a Ghostbusters car and make it back to what it was when it came off the line. Just a wow. pristine, beautiful car, giant fins. And I mean, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I miss her. She's She's in the shop. Oh, I so. bet. No, that's a that's a sweet ride. I'm intrigued. You said yep. you have to um, apply with three different license plate suggestions. What were your other two, if not Corpsey? Oh, good question. I think it might have been uh, like GC Mag, something like that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nothing mm-hmm. as good as Corpsey. I don't even remember what the other one was. <laughs> I'm uh, just glad you got Corpsey. I mean, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's, it's great. And, you know, we've been taking it. You know, I'm not really a car guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've got someone that is into all of it and helps me with it. But there's a, a restaurant over here called Bob's Big Boy. Oh, yeah. And it's where everybody brings the car on a Friday night. So I've gone twice, and there's all these old timers, you know, and they, mm-hmm. they have their little chairs they set up, and they sit there and talk about cars. And yeah. They walk up to me, and they ask me questions, you know, about the engine. You know, is that a Niner C QTV? And I'm like, <laughs> yep. That's what it that's is. What, that's, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Whatever they say, I just agree. But, uh, she's, a, she's a beauty. Maybe I'll drive. Now, where are you guys located at? Oh, we're here in, in L.A., just right outside of downtown L.A. Yeah, no, we're, we're oh, fairly. Okay. That's why we're familiar with a lot of the, the spots you mentioned. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's part of our little stomping grounds here. Yeah. Well, when, when we do, let's uh, we'll bring the hearse over. Oh, that would be oh, sweet. Oh, wow. We'll have a party. I'll bring some girls, and then, of course, I'll have some corpses. And some corpses. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah. You know, years ago, we did a thing where if people sent us a picture, we would send back their corpse. Oh, really? That's so yeah, cool. We, oh, my yeah, goodness. It was kind of expensive, and, you know, like, I don't think we got a lot of takers. But what is a great idea? Like, you send a picture, and then I have my team make you in what Corpsify you look like. Corpsify it. Like, when we had um, Shane <laughs> Zombie, Rob, Rob Zombie agreed to let us uh, make a corpse of him, and he had to approve it. So oh, if you yeah. look at the cover very carefully, that's our number one issue. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, there are even tattoos on his arms that have been shrunken down. Oh, wow. He, he's, you know, corpse. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So we, did, we did for a while make corpses of people, but it wasn't, wasn't a big thing. I don't understand. Can you imagine Christmas, you know, you order your husband's uh, corpse, <laughs> and he opens it up under the tree. He'd probably get a message or something from that. I don't know. But it was yeah. one of our crazy, uh, <laughs> wow. crazy ideas. Honestly, have, I mean, if you even have the ability to do that, that sounds like an amazing yeah. thing. I can't imagine not wanting to order that for someone. I can think of so many people who I would buy that for. <laughs> that would be, yeah. I wouldn't be angry if I found that under my tree. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we might not be there. <laughs> one, one last question before we, we let yeah. you go. Playboy has Playmates, Penthouse has Penthouse Pets, and then uh, Hustler has Hustler Honeys. What does uh, Girls and Corpses have? Corpsets. Corpsets. That's so cool. Nice. Huh. Girls that are in the magazine are corpsets. Really? Very that's cool. That's what you, that's... Yeah, that's right. I knew what the question was. You know, the thing is, I'm kind of like the, uh, I'm kind of like the, the mascot. Cor- uh-huh. There's two of me. There's Corpsey, and Corpsey goes to events and things, and there's Robert Ryan, and mm-hmm. I run the magazine. But I, it's kind of hard for me to sit, you know, at home in my, you know, my black leather jacket and black hat with all my rings and stuff. <laughs> so, 
you know, I, it's not usually how I work at home. So that's, right. that's me. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Corpsey comes out and goes to events, and people write to Corpsey and all this kind of thing. So nice. Corpsey, uh, I've appeared in several movies as Corpsey. Matter of fact, I think in, yes, in, uh, in the Orphan Killer Bound by Blood, uh, there's a man uh, pleasuring himself to a copy of Girls and Corpses right oh, before what? he gets killed. Oh, wow. I several people asked to do that. And there was actually one big film that I signed an agreement with, and it wound up not being in the movie. I was kind of disappointed. But it was a big film, and it was going to be in the movie. So somewhere, again, someone will have Girls and Corpses uh, in a big film. But it's nice. been in several smaller movies. So, you know, keep an eye on it. Yeah, I may have to redo my, my profile picture because I'm holding an issue of uh, Burning Angel magazine that Joanna Angel gave me signed. So I might have to redo one with uh, Girls and Corpses because this is... You really should. Yeah, it, it's... But I know, I know Joanne. Yes, yeah, she... Oh, yeah. she was just starting out. Oh, really? No, yeah, yeah she's, she's super cool. Yeah, no, I, I, I worked with her for, for a while running uh, the board yeah, for her no, radio no, show. No, 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 no not in the other. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish, but no, unfortunately. Although, I, uh, how much cooler would have been if I would just yeah, left that ambiguously, left yeah, left, left it open there. <laughs> Joanna never looked like a porn star to me, though. I can't explain it. She looks... It's, it's weird. She totally transforms in front of the camera. It, it's incredible, the, the stuff that, that she does. Um <laughs> Go right, Genevieve. Come on. Get your <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, why don't you tell people yeah. where they can find your magazine, where they can subscribe, where they can find you on social media and all that good stuff. The place to buy the magazine. And, and if you go to our store, you're going to be able to get package deals. You know, we'll have groups of them. Um, there's a deal called Crazy Eights right now. Mm-hmm. We have another special where you get two issues and then you get a free copy of um, uh, Last Last Gallows Humor. To get that book, which is a good deal. It's a $13 deal. Anyhow, that's girlsandcorpsesstore.com. Mm-hmm. And the and is spelled out. It's not the sign. It's uh-huh. and. So girls, A-N-D-C-O-R-P-S-E-S-S-T-O-R-E.com. That's where you can buy things. If you want to preview the issue, just go to girlsandcorpses.com, and you can look at the current issue and see what's in it. Facebook is uh, Girls and Corpses, and our Twitter is Girls with the letter N Corpses. Mm -hmm. Uh, That will be changed because we're battling because it's a trademark and we uh, own it. But it it, it doesn't matter. We have it. That's our Twitter. That's pretty much it. I Mm -hmm. don't go. I, I, I don't have time to do all of the sites. But the Facebook's great. We got I think 200. 5,000 likes. Nice. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. No, that's great. That's great. And we're really, we're really happy to, to see this. And Facebook has got all the pictures and everything we've been talking about as well. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really excited because I, honestly, I, I love the idea of the magazine. I, it's so unique. There's really nothing out there that can compare it to, you know, I mean, I know there's some gore magazines and stuff like that, but n- nothing that I would say is anything like Girls and Corpses. And, and the fact that you get some, some pretty major stars on there, not just models, also you know the, the the male talent if if i may <laughs> use the term uh it, it's yeah. also you know pr- pretty high caliber so we're really happy and honored that you took the time to be with us tonight and like i said i know you're a busy man just talking to you tonight and, and hearing about all the stuff you got in the works and all the stuff you're just finishing and i'm out of breath you sleep where do you find time to sleep <laughs> <laughs> what sleep? Right. You know, I'm up until about three or four every morning. You know, that's that's a great time to work. Um, I don't know. I just keep going. To be honest with you, I wish I had more energy. There's so many more things I could do. I really appreciate the exposure and the uh, promotion of the magazine on your show. And uh, I believe heavily in that because of my background also doing publicity. So this is important and to let people know about it. So they can enjoy this crazy thing that's uh, sweeping the, uh, the world. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. We, we need a laugh right now. We need something to definitely, you know, definitely. keep us uh, enjoying it. And this this will this will entertain you. Yeah. Put it on your coffee table and watch what happens. <laughs> right. What better absolutely. way to, to kick off 2016 than with, uh, with a fresh issue of uh, Girls and Corpses. So definitely we, exactly. we encourage listeners to go check it out. Uh, R.S. Corpsey Ryan, thank you so much for being our thank guest tonight. You. What can I say? It's been a blast and hopefully not, not the last time that we have you on. Anytime, guys. I love talking to you. So hopefully soon. And I'm going to get my hearse over. Awesome. So we'll, uh, look. Yeah, we'll we'll take that thing to to a Big Boys Burgers and and tell people that's exactly whatever they say. We'll agree with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank, you thank you so take much. Take it Cold easy. Sea. Happy New Year. You Happy too. New Year. Bye bye. Good night. That was none other than the editor in chief of Girls and Corpses oh, magazine. So funny. 
That's so great. R.S. Corpsey Ryan, a man of many talents. What can I say? And obviously, we were excited to have him on tonight to talk in length about this magazine and some of the other stuff that he's involved in because, you know, they're right up our alley. We are, we're a big fan of all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure many of our listeners are as well. So definitely check it out. Girlsandcorpses.com. That's the website. And let's not forget the uh, the cool little uh, shop they have with uh, all kinds of <laughs> I know. Honestly, interesting it, it, gifts for your uh, it's worth it just adult browsing, friends, I'll say that much. browsing through just because it's funny. No, it's great. Even even if you're not going to buy anything, just, just have a look at it because it's funny. Yeah, no, it really is. It really is. And if you miss any part of this interview, uh, do not fret. It will be up on the website soon. Mm -hmm. That being said, we got a really good request, a really good request by our good friend Tony Merlot. He wanted to listen to some Temple you, you of the Dog. You sound like a m magician, like trying to trying to find the coin behind someone's ear. I, was it here? Oh, I, was I it know, here? I know it was oh, in here somewhere. It's here. No, but honestly, this is one of my yeah. Talk about a super group, Temple of the Dog. I don't know how many people know this. This was like half of Pearl Jam and half of Soundgarden. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? It was like two Seattle rock juggernauts oh, joining it was, it, was, it was this is like the Ultron of bands jam. or something right no yeah something like that <laughs> like pearl garden or sound yeah sound jam. jam that would be <laughs> that would be the the options but yeah no the, this was a, a great record uh, actually another cool band which i believe it was uh, uh, like half of mud honey and half of pearl jam was green river mud jam mud jam no but green river i remember finding the record at a fries i don't know uh, maybe people outside of california i don't know how common fries is but it's an electronic store which also sells media you know like yeah. records and cds and stuff. movies dvds and all that good stuff uh, years ago i found uh, after hearing so much about Green River, this is pre-internet people, so it's not like I could go on the internet and Spotify the Green River album. Um, I finally found it and bought it, and now, now it's, uh, as a huge fan of the Seattle rock scene, you can imagine I was ecstatic to have found that record. And this one ranks right up there with with that. Uh, this is uh, Temple of the Dog. This track is called Call Me a Dog. dog. Requested. Thank you. What's up, You're dog? Welcome. <laughs> this is Dog. This was requested by our good buddy Tony Merlo. Enjoy this one. We're going to be back next week. Take care. Be safe. God bless. Don't do anything too crazy. We want to see you back. Enjoy the beginning of 2016. Set the pace to make yes. it a good year for yourself. Happy We're excited year. for what 2016 has in store for Lots us. Of fun things. A lot of exciting stuff, and we're going to let everybody know about it all in due time. So you want to stick around, stay tuned. In the meantime, enjoy this jam. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. West of the Rockies with Frank the Engineer on the Independent FM, Los Angeles.